welcome to day five of the 2017 Australian Open. Let's uh, head out to Melbourne, get the thoughts of our team out there. Catherine, are all yours? Yes, I found not one but two Grand Slam champions and I think that's only fitting for what we've seen tonight, which is history being made. And I also want to just hear from John McEnroe. He's been talking to Catherine Whitaker. Well, you've mentioned Yvonne. How, how is it seeing him around the place, seeing him in the locker room? What's that like? He hasn't changed at all. How are you coping with the sitting still aspect of being a coach, John? I know that's not something that necessarily comes that easily or naturally to you. Uh, sitting still is not my forte. Who would make the worst James Bond? I'd say Grothy. Yeah, Grothy. Because yeah, yeah. he, he can't, he wouldn't be able to stay undercover. You can't be undercover with that hair. Okay. <laughs> Just finally, we saw you go straight to your phone there. Who's the first person you text? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, sir. Andy, first things first, how is the ankle? We all had our hearts and our mouths for you a bit, but you seem to be moving a little bit better on it as that third set wore on. Uh, yeah, it's, it's sore just now. Well, Annabelle Croft is with me. We're going to look ahead again to potentially two matches for Britain's Tara Moore. We talked about her yesterday. We were hoping to see her. We're desperately hoping we get to see her twice today, aren't we? I hope so. I mean, it was a very difficult day for everybody yesterday. There's something so clinical, almost ruthless about the way you're playing tennis. There seems to be almost a glint in your eye. You're a woman on a mission at this tournament. <laughs> I was very happy with how I was able to start the match with the way I wanted to play and also finish it. Hello and welcome to the Tennis Podcast. Obviously, somebody at some point in the next hundred years will be better than Roger Federer. I just don't know what that will look like. It's like trying to imagine a new colour. I don't want to get viewers too excited, but I'm sure the tennis world would relish the prospect, and it is still possible, of a Federer-Nadal final. <laughs> you leave us with quite a thought there, <laughs> Catherine. Thank you very much indeed. You say that you've been speaking to experts, experts players and everything. The wealth of feeling in favour of Nadal, is that simply because of the overwhelming head-to-head -head in favour of Rafa? Purely and simply up there. We've got Rafa fans behind us, don't you worry, there are plenty of Federer fans here as well. It is an utterly extraordinary carnival atmosphere in Melbourne Park tonight. Something very, very magical has happened here in Melbourne tonight and we feel very grateful, Pat, I think, to have yeah. enjoyed it here.